from the Royal College of Nursing. Good evening to you. Um, what do you think the first priority should be for the new Health Secretary? Well, the Health Secretary needs to engage with the Royal College of Nursing and other Royal Colleges and Trade Unions to start to address the crisis within nursing. And until we address the crisis within our nursing workforce, the tens of thousands of vacancies that we've got, he won't be able to address all of the other crises that he's got and pressures that he's got in his inventory. Uh, those waiting lists that we've heard talked about time and time again, the backlog and those people waiting for outpatient appointments and the many more um, pressing um, priorities that he's got within the health service and within social care. Describe for us um, the, the situation as you see it from the point of view from nurses within the NHS. What, what, what are the main problems? Well, look, it's very obvious to anyone that nursing going into this pandemic um, describes uh, a service and a profession that uh, went through the pandemic with one hand held behind their back with the tens of thousands of vacancies that we've got. Now, that was very, very difficult, but that was not just going into the pandemic. We knew that long before the pandemic that we had a workforce in crisis. That hasn't changed at all. In fact, it's got worse because after 16 months of working 14 and 15 hour shifts, day in, day out, many nurses are approaching us now to say they can't take any more. They're looking for other options. They're looking to leave our profession. We have day and daily calls from uh, recruitment agencies worldwide looking to recruit our nurses from England to um, um, services right throughout the world. We can't afford to lose one single nurse out of our service. And if we are really serious and if the health secretary is serious about addressing all of the priorities that we've got, the first thing he needs to do is to start treating nurses decently, try and hold on to those nurses we've got. And the way he can do that is to pay them a decent wage. We know that he may have the pay review body report, the, the body that sets uh, the pay award for nurses. That may already be in his in-tray this evening. And what we're saying is, please do the decent thing, pay nurses an honest, decent wage, reward them for what they've done and try and hold on to those great nurses that we have already got in our service. And in your estimation, what would be a decent, honest wage for the work that, that nurses do? Well, we know that nurses' pay has fallen behind in real terms by 15%. Nurses are asking to be awarded a 12.5% pay rise. That's what our members are looking for. That is one way that we will hold on to the nurses we've got within our health service and how we'll recruit new people to come into our health service. That's a really good starting point. And unless the, the health secretary comes up with something that will show nurses that he knows the value of nursing and not just the cost of nursing, then I'm really scared and frightened that we will have a crisis on our hands moving into the future. In terms of um, highlighting the value of nursing, as you say, what, what is morale like amongst nurses uh, at the moment? We know very early on in, in the crisis there were, wasn't enough PPE, um, very, very difficult conditions that they had to work under, were forced to work under. What is morale like at the moment? I think that nurses are really saying to us loud and clear they're exhausted, absolutely exhausted. They are also suffering the trauma of having worked 16 months during a pandemic and it's not over yet. Uh, nurses are still working in very difficult conditions. So, and, and now what they're seeing is more and more patients requiring treatments that have been delayed for years. That takes its toll on nurses as well because they see their patients suffering. They see people that have been uh, denied treatment for years before the pandemic and they, they feel that in many respects they've let their patients down by not being able to offer them the care and treatment that those patients deserve. So that is all a very stressful situation for nurses and as well they haven't had a rest. Most of them haven't been able to take their annual leave or had any time off, and yet they've just been quiet and in their unassuming way, moving into the next crisis within the health service. But doing that with a really depleted workforce, that's very, very difficult. And then worrying that they may be awarded a very small pay, pay rise. And people forget that nurses themselves 
need to be able to pay their bills at the end of the month. They have childcare um, um, arrangements to put in place, the same as anyone else. And their contribution to society and the economy is there for everyone to see. So I think the honourable, decent thing to do would be to award them a decent pay rise this time round. You mentioned there in that answer waiting lists. What, what is the, the current state of play with those? Because we know very many people had operations postponed because of uh, COVID being the, the top priority. Well, we have we heard this morning again, 5 million people waiting over um, 12 months on our waiting list, uh, 440,000 people waiting for their first outpatient appointment. We won't seriously address any of those issues at all without nurses. At every time you come into your health, the health service or into social care, you need a nurse to provide that care and treatment for you. Very rarely do you enter any part of the health system and not come in contact with the nurse. So if you haven't got the nurses there to look after the patients, we aren't going to be able to address those waiting lists in the way that we need to for our patients. Finally, your abiding message to the new health secretary tonight. Well, um, address the workforce crisis within nursing. Um, what I have said time and time again to the Secretary of State um, in the past is every decision that he makes, he needs to have a nurse at his side. And if he thinks like a nurse and for nursing, then he won't go wrong for patients. Pat Cullen, thank you so much for speaking to us this evening. Pat Cullen, the Acting General Secretary and Chief Executive of the Royal College of Nursing. Thank you. Thank you. The Belarus opposition leader, Svetlana.